Carrasco and uh, thank you for reading. Man of Pacquiao, I don't think there will be a problem for Man. As he's very, very funny. But every once in a while, even Michael also becomes a little bit more. And that's the opening bell for Round by Round, presented to you by Eastern Communications. Baboy Pilipinas, welcome world! I'm Boya Tizon. And I'm Dennis Principe. Bill Velasco will join us later on in the show. Mga kaibigan, sa aming programa ngayong gabi, pag-uusapan pa namin ang uh, laban, ang darating na laban ni Donny Nietes. Na mga kalaban si Norberto Jimenez, uh, isang WBA 115-pound eliminator na magaganap po sa Disyembre 11 sa Dubai. Uh, in less than a month, mga kaibigan, ang uh, napaka-popular na four division uh, world champion na si Don Nietes. Na may record of 43 wins, uh, one loss and uh, five draws. 23 of the wins by a knockout of Murcia Negros Occidental. Ay uh, angat! Uh, Akit sa telon Kalaban ang WBA World Rank Dominican Republic Fighter uh, Si Norbelto Menito Jimenez that has, a, that has a record of 30 wins 16 by knockout 9 losses and 5 draws Sa darating pong aonsin ng Disyembre Sa Coca-Cola Arena in Dubai um, Dennis, matanong kita no? uh, Medyo matagal-tagal na rin no, na Hindi lumalabad itong si uh, Uh, ahas uh, at 39 at 39 years old um, do you think that uh, Nietes still has that kill instinct up to now? Alam mo Papa B ang maganda rito kay Donny Nietes is that uh, the entire time that uh, he, be, he became a world champion or he was a world champion his entire reign ano, record niya ano, na may tuturing uh, kaya siya tumagal is that uh, very prudent yung kanya style eh. hindi siya yung uh, rarara type of fighter no uh, masyado siyang systematic no? yung kanyang galaw and that's the reason kung bakit tumagal siya as a world champion and even at age 39 no eh masasabi pa rin natin na world class pa rin no uh, you, you can't say really no na pababa na no yung kanyang uh, skill No? And um, knowing na naalagaan ni Donny Ahas nito yung kanyang sarili, eh, right now it would be foolish ano, uh, for Jimenez to consider him as uh, someone who is already has, eh, has been. No? Uh, mag- nagkakamali si John. Pwede siguro, no? baka pag maglaban sila, baka doon na finally lumabas. But I'm happy for uh, Donny no? na nakalaban siya ng... Uh, at least once ano uh, after yung kanyang two year hiatus no nung tinalo niya si Kazuto Ioka for the WBO uh, title mm-hmm. finally nakalaban siya kay Pablo Carrillo and it was a 10 round unanimous decision win it was a the type of fight na he badly needed uh, action field pinawisan siya mm-hmm. against a quality opponent napalaban siya so it's safe to say na yung kalawang wala na sa kanya. So uh, this is going to be uh, a a a uh, a good opportunity uh, for uh, Donny Asnietes ano, na makalaban nila sa isang uh, world championship. Well, ito na kalaban niya Dennis do, a two-time world challenger do, sa Minito Jimenez. Ay uh, uh, isang uh, uh, fighter din na masasabi natin has already uh, been uh, given uh, his chance for a world title. Pero But hindi niya nasungkit yun. Isa sa, or just one of those two opportunities. But hindi niya nasungkit yun. Ay mabibigat yung mga <laughs> nakalaban niya eh, no? uh, for the World Championship. So, yung huli niya nakalaban is, uh, ako for me, is one of the uh, pound, top pound for pound fighters talaga. No? Itong si uh, Khalid uh, Ayafay. You know? uh, he's, a, he's a well-respected Uh, long time world champion although natalo siya nung huli no kay uh, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez mm. uh, but uh, I still believe no na makakabalik pa itong si uh, Kalidya Fay and uh, before that he fought a 
uh, one of the uh, most popular champions in Japan, no, si Kohei Ono. It was a split decision, uh, actually, a split uh, draw, actually. No? So, hindi mo masabi talagang uh, uh, natalo siya ron. No? And he is a type of fighter na yung second half of his career, lahat ng mga mistakes niya, eh, no? na-correct niya, kaya naging maganda yung takbo ng second half. Eh, no? He's had, uh, I think, nine losses. You know? And most of those losses happened sa early part of his career. Hmm. So he's a man, he's, he's a boxer who learned a lot from his previous losses. Kaya ngayon, hindi mo basta-basta tatanunin no? itong si uh, Norbelto uh, Jimenez. Ano? But yun lang, ano? kung titignan mo sa balat ng mga nakalaban ni uh ni uh Jimenez eh medyo uh, apart from Kalidia Fire no I think malayo no itong si uh, Donnie Asnetes pagdating do sa mga quality of opponent sa nakalaban ni uh, Norbelto Jimenez Well looking at the this fight no sabi nga natin na nabanggit nga natin that this will be a uh, eliminator um malaki din ang importansya for both fighters to win this particular fight dahil this will set them up either one of them whoever wins this fight this will set them up to uh, you know most likely get a shot at a uh, a WBA uh, uh, fight against uh, Juan Francisco Estrada or uh, Joshua El Profesor Franco of uh, of the USA um in, in in all likelihood in all likelihood who's the more who's the tougher opponent will it be uh, Estrada if ever no or uh, Franco sa tingin mo okay Juan Francisco Estrada uh will be the tougher of the two no he'll be uh kumbaga ano eh, a tougher opponent for Uh, uh, Donny Nietes, pero yung more tougher talaga kay Estrada is how to deal with him. Mm. No? Yung kanyang promoter at manager. Kasi ako, I really believe iniiwasan nila itong si Donny Nietes. Okay. Ano? So baka mangyayari ito, <coughs> while mandatory ito, no? eh baka makagawa na naman ng Para magic at... itong si Estrada na instead of him uh, defending his crown against The Don't. mandatory challenger. Whoever in, wins in the... Donietes. Baka may push nila. Hindi, yung Franco na lang labanan mo. Mm. Huwag na kami. Or, kung pipilit niya, bitawan ko yung title. Pero hawak ko pa naman yung WBC. Mm. No? So, ganun na mangyayari niyan. But, uh, hopefully, you know, eh, kasi Estrada right now is still looking at uh, a fight with uh, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. Yeah. It's the most lucrative fight uh, for Estrada. And, uh, kung mga kailangan naman siya ng isang activity fight, Donnie Nietes will be a very dangerous activity fight uh, for Estrada. So I don't think uh, isusugal yan no, ni uh, Juan Francisco Estrada. Well mga kaibigan, itong uh, mainit na mainit na fight card on December 11 in Dubai will uh, will be headlined actually by uh, by uh, John Riel Casimero will be uh, going up against uh, the babyface assassin Paul Butler. Also featured, mga kaibigan, sa fight card na ito ay uh, isa pang Pilipino na si Jason Mama who will be challenging for the world title against the uh, British defending IBF flyweight world champion na si Sonny Edwards of the United Kingdom. So para kay Donny, kay uh, John Riel Casimero at kay Jason Mama, kami po ay uh, nagdarasal at naghahatid ng uh, good vibes na sana silang tatlo po ay manalo sa fight card na ito na mangyayari sa December 11 sa Dubai. Okay, and our next topic mga kaibigan here on this edition of Round by Round. Alam nyo mga kaibigan, di namin maintindi na. No? Hinigilig talaga ng mga bat- basketbolista no? na sumausaw sa sport na boxing. At ito na naman mga kaibigan, meron naman kaming na- natanggap na nakitang balita na itong former NBA uh, star na si Deron Williams ay pumayag na lumaban against uh, another non-boxing athlete. Uh, he will be facing the former National Football League star Frank Gore in a four-round 
boxing match that will be taking place on December 18 sa Tampa, Florida. Isa sa mga undercard ng labang Jake Paul at Tommy Fury. Alam mo, uh, Dennis, pinag-usapan lang natin ito about a week, two weeks ago. Sabi ko, ano ba naman itong mga, mga athletes na ito? Pag, uh, pag may pagkakataon na, sige nga, laban nga kayo, eh, bigla pumapayag naman na walang kaano-ano. Pero siguro pera to no, Brad? Uh, malamang lamang. No? Pero parang unlikely no, kay Deron Williams because uh, ang alam ko to while uh, early part of his uh, retirement, sumisweldo pa ito. Eh, no? uh, uh, meron pa siyang nakukuhang uh, pera. No? Pero uh, interesting ano? uh, because uh, hindi rin naman, ang alam ko, hindi rin naman talaga bago no sa uh, combat sport ano uh, itong si uh, Deron Williams and he is an athlete eh? yep. a legitimate uh, athlete ano being uh-huh. a former NBA player at uh, saka champion wrestler no high school brad yes oh wrestler nga no uh, parang sa mga MMA bouts din ano or meron ding konting MMA uh-huh. experience ano uh-huh. uh, si Deron Williams at uh, ang balita ko parang ano ito eh, no it's going to be a sanctioned professional boxing match talagang boxing bout talaga ito no for us but uh, magkakaroon ng magkakaroon na record ika nga itong dalawa ko yes, magkakaroon yes. ng lista maililista oo eh sana wag lang matulad dun sa ano yung nangyari kay uh, Oscar De La Hoya no na he had to back out dun sa kanya uh, tama uh, exhibi- uh, well it's it was not an exhibition actually na naging exhibition uh, pumasok na si Evander Holyfield pero Uh, ako, uh, you know, Deron Williams is one of my favorite uh, players, uh, lalo na naglalaro ito sa Utah Jazz because oh, ano ako eh, Utah Jazz fan ako, no? John Stockton fan ako. Yan! Stockton Malone. Stockton to Malone ka eh, yan. So nung nawala siya, Utah, kasi ako, lo- ang loyalty ko nasa team eh, no? Uh-huh. And just si Deron Williams, si Memo Okur. Memo Okur. Diba? Si Andre Kirilenko. Yan! AK-47. Diba? <laughs> uh, Carlos Boozer. Yan! Diba? Oh, good. The booze. Yun ang... Pero, uh, okay. diba? uh, Pero ito, ito tinan natin. No? Isang former... Hmm. Well, hindi naman former. They're actually... Pwede siyang magpa-sign up eh. <laughs> pwede ba magpa-sign up itong... Itong uh, si uh, Frank Gore... Uh, ay uh, actually pwede pa siyang magpa-sign up kung magpagpatuloy ang kanyang uh, NFL career. Ang problema mm-hmm. lang talaga ay uh, he's not well, he's not officially retired but he is still yet to sign with a team this year after uh, playing 15 games and uh, starting off 14 of those games with the uh, New York Jets uh, in uh, the year 2020 pero hanggang ngayon hindi pa siya pumipirma maulit so hindi pa natin siya pwedeng tawaging retirado pero kung uh-huh. titingnan natin no itong si uh, Gore ay 5 feet 9 inches lamang ang mga ito naman si Deron Williams ay 6-3 so ano magiging ano niyan ano magiging uh, pangitain natin diyan Dennis um nakakatakot dito Papa B at uh... Si Deron Williams is a 6-3 na ano yun, may finesse point guard din. Eh. Oh. So, diba? Unlike yung mga 6-3, 6-4, yung mga malalaking fighters na medyo mechanical. Yung galaw sa boxing, ah, oh. yung mga ganyan. Diba? Ano na yun, eh, medyo parang awkward na yung mga galaw. Eh. But, and considering that he's got a parang uh, contact sport experience, mm. ay, mukhang... Mukhang malalagay rito sa ano uh, sa delikado yung kanyang kalapan no? so, but, but we'll see no uh, kasi wala tayong makita ng ano eh I've been searching sa YouTube wala Meron wala akong makita eh wala 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 pa ako. kahit wala sana makita natin ano doing the punch mitts Uh-oh. or yung para makita mo yung format diba? para makita mo yung format di ba how, how do they move di ba how eh, the movement wala na, na, nakikita ko puro highlights ng NBA career ni Deron Williams so yeah So uh, pretty interesting no. Uh, It'll be very uh, interesting. Del, very sh- well, that's for sure. So Maribigan, this happens. This four round fight between uh, Frank Gore and Ron Williams happens on December 18 as a uh, part of the undercard in the uh, 
uh, Jake Paul uh, Fury uh, fight that will also feature women boxers Amanda Serrano this is mga pinaka maingay na pinaka sikat na we uh, female boxers sa America kamakalaban si Miriam Gutierrez at pag-uusapan namin yan siguro malamang next week pag-uusapan din namin yan and now let's turn you over to our colleague Bill Velasco Bill thanks Dennis and Boya Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the history of the word battle royale, which is a term that has become very popular, particularly in professional wrestling, wherein you get a lot of combatants fighting each other inside the ring. Now, this actually originated in boxing, and it is actually a very dark time in the history of the sport. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. If you look at all the pre-AD accounts of boxing and hand-to-hand combat, generally there are just two warriors fighting each other with bare knuckles. And uh, you see this in ancient pottery, you see this in ancient drawings. Uh, nagsimula po talaga yan dahil sa dalawang uh, uh, panahon. No? Nung una, ito ay para makapag-insayo ang mga sundalo nung mga panahon na yun. As you know, there were no long-range weapons at the time, save for spears and later on catapults. And so hand-to-hand combat was very important. Now, in case that you were deprived of your weapons, all you had really were, were daggers and your bare hands. Now, on the other side, during Roman times, as you all know, they were very bloodthirsty. They had a lot of people fighting each other to the death, either for survival or for their freedom. Now, yung mga bihag po nila, pinaglalaban po nila, uh, minsan may, may, mga, may mga gamit na sandata, minsan wala. You know, and uh, then came along the creation of the primitive boxing gloves, originally known as cestus or cesta in, blu- in uh, plural. They were made of leather and metal and had often spikes or, or, or knobs on them or even just basically covered the knuckles to protect them. But sometimes they even had poison, so nobody would survive that fight. That was purely for the entertainment of the masses and the elite, especially when there were uprisings about to be done. It is called the bread and circuses uh, tactic wherein you just give people bread or food to temporarily stave off their hunger at lilibangin mo lang sila para makalimutan nila yung mga sama na loob nila sa mga namumuno sa kanila. Now, this persisted well into the, uh, the <clears throat> modern era until the time of slavery in the U.S. prior to the creation of the Marquis of Queensberry Rules. One of the ways in which rich slave owners entertained themselves was something they created called the Battle Royale. They would get a handful of slaves, blindfold them or cover their heads in sacks, put them together either inside the ring or just inside the living room and and encircle them and have them beat each other without knowing who they were fighting until only one of them was left standing. At uh, pinagpupustahan pa huya yung mga, uh, mga alipin nila na naglalaban-laban. And this was really a very dark time in the abuse of human rights. And this uh, misuse of boxing you know, for racism purposes persisted even after the creation of the Marquis of Queensberry Rules when supposedly boxers were supposed to be gentlemen and they were supposed to fight with honor and with dignity, it was also used as a weapon to keep African-Americans or persons of color from equally competing against uh, their white counterparts. It was uh, only until the time of Jack Johnson that a uh, legitimate champion, other than all these uh, talented uh, white individuals, rose to the forefront. And that is the dark story of the battle royale and the abuse of boxing against non-white persons. Balik sa inyo, Boy at Dennis. Thank you, Bill. And now, let's go to our fearless forecast brought to you by Eastern Communications. And we will now focus on the upcoming fight between Conor Ben and Chris Algeri. December 11 din ito, mga kaibigan. Pero ito naman ay mangyayari sa United Kingdom. Of course, mga kaibigan, kayo ay familiar sa pangalang Chris Algeri dahil ito po ay nakalaban ni Manny Pacquiao uh, years ago na saan uh, nanalo po of course si uh, Manny Pacquiao nung laban niyon but tell me more Dennis about Conor Ben I'm not I'm not too familiar with him 
is one of the uh, up and coming uh, welterweight, you know, fighters, you know, dyan sa uh, United Kingdom. Ano, he's been unbeaten, no, so far in the uh, nineteen uh, fights, you know. Uh, although yung kanyang huling nakalaban is uh, perhaps yung mas uh, kilala talaga, no, si Adrian uh, Granados. Mm. Uh, and they fought for a regional title. But uh, if you look at this um, uh, resume, so to speak, ano, wala talaga makikita kang may laman ano, na boxer. Maganda yung uh, fight record, no? win-loss uh, record, most of them. Pero yung talagang named opponent, eh, wala pa siya nakalaban uh, gano'n. No? So, if ever, Chris Algieri is going to be that fighter. But the uh, question is, does he think na Algieri is uh, already a journeyman? Ano? Kasi, tumagal yung Kimani Pacquiao ng 12 rounds. Ah. Ano? Uh, and then, after that, back-to-back losses, actually. No? He also lost to Amir Khan after that uh, Manny Pacquiao uh, debacle. Pagkatapos doon, nakapanal na isang laban, natalo ng knockout kay Aaron Spence. All along, I thought he would retire after that. No? Pero he made a comeback uh, after two years. And then he scored, he has scored uh, four straight uh, victories. No? So, sa tingin ko, Papa B, may hunger pa itong mamang ito. No? And hindi mo ma... Yeah, you cannot belittle the determination of this man because uh, he's actually a professional... Uh, conditioning coach no nutrition nutritionist actually ito eh, no hmm. uh, so magtataka ka no at age uh, 37 eh lumalabon pa rin and he's doing this not for money for sure no maybe factor yun pero hindi siya yung tipo na uh, someone who needs the money badly kaya lumalaban no? he's someone na he knows what he's doing and he knows that uh, he can still Uh, fight in that uh, elite level. Kaya siya yung napili kong uh, fearless fighter because apart from what I've said, he'll be fighting behind enemy lines. So, siya yung dadayo no? uh, mismo dito sa teritoryo ni uh, Conor Ben. So it's going to be an interesting uh, fight and it will be interesting to watch uh, how Chris Algieri would perform against a young unbeaten boxer who will be a hometown Uh, uh, bet you know, uh, come fight night December 11 uh, in Liverpool Okay mga amiga, now is the time for reliable connections Eastern Communications Fiber One is ideal for powering small medium enterprises that are on their way to digitizing their businesses and pushing forward to a strong and fearless tomorrow Do contact 5300 may repeat Do contact 5300 5300-7000 or visit their website eastern.com.ph for more information about the service. And that is our uh, fearless forecast. Chris Algeri to win against Connor Ben on uh, December 11 in the United Kingdom brought to you by Eastern Communications. And that's the final bell for today's edition of Round by Round. It's presented to you by Eastern Communications. I'm Boyan Sison. And I am Dennis Springsbury. We are on Facebook, Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. And syempre, nandiyan din po tayo sa YouTube. So don't forget to uh, like, follow, share, and subscribe now. On the Friday edition of Round by Round, it'll be Bill Velasco, Nisi Icasiano, and Ryan Songalia who will be answering the bell. This has been Round by Round, all boxing, all Filipino, all the time. Ingat po kayo.